Hey, so I know um, over the course of the last couple of weeks I've been on Facebook posting about, oh yay, I bought a LaserDisc player, great. And uh, I'd get so excited about the prospect of owning a LaserDisc player that I would tell people like, yay, I got a LaserDisc player. And people would be like, you know, that's great, a DVD player. I mean, what's the big deal? Everyone owns one of those. And then the explanation begins. So um, basically, I'm going to be giving just a little history lesson of LaserDisc and why I've been kind of obsessing over it over the last couple of weeks. I finally did get a LaserDisc player off of eBay. It does work. It was my second attempt at buying one. Um, I can finally watch Ghostbusters on LaserDisc. But uh, first, a little history. Um, today, I mean, there's several different ways of watching a movie. Obviously, I think most people today are watching them on Netflix, streaming, digital copies that a lot of the times come with your Blu-rays. Um, of course, you've got Blu-rays, you've got DVDs, nothing special there. This is how we watch movies today, on some sort of digital medium. But when I was growing up, pretty much the standard way of watching a movie aside from cable was good old VHS. Um, now today there's a lot of formats, but also back in like the 80s, early 90s, there were a lot of formats as well. Um, I don't know if a lot of you guys remember uh, HD DVDs, but that was a format that was sandwiched between DVDs and Blu-rays. HD DVDs were supposed to be like the new high definition format, but I think once the PlayStation 3 came along and everything moved to Blu-ray, HD DVD kind of went, uh, went south. And the same thing happened in the, I want to say, the early 80s. Uh, aside from VHS, which is, I think, what most people owned, um, there was Betamax, which was another form of, uh, it was an analog medium, just like VHS. Uh, the tapes were a little smaller. Um, supposedly, there was better quality on Betamax, but because of the pricing differences, uh, VHS won out in the long run. And for probably, I want to say, 20 years, this is how you watched movies. But there was another format that didn't really catch on, and that format was LaserDisc. And I'll go over all of kind of like the pitfalls of why it failed or, or why it didn't take off at least. LaserDisc was actually pretty popular in Japan, and uh, what it is, it's um, pretty much the precursor to DVD. It's the same, a lot of the things that just became commonplace with digital mediums like uh, menus and things like, well, LaserDisc didn't have menus, but a lot of the things like uh, chapter skipping and chapter forwarding and that kind of things frame by frame, that originated with LaserDiscs. Um, for starters, let me explain why LaserDiscs probably didn't take off. This is a LaserDisc. This is not a record, which is what my wife thought at the time when she bought it. This is a LaserDisc. This is a VHS. So you can kind of see, first of all, the spacing issues, you know, the size. Um, the other kind of unfortunate thing with LaserDisc is because of the technology, you can only fit at the most one hour of video on one side of a LaserDisc. It's not like a DVD where you can watch the entire two or three hour movie on one disc. Um, you actually had to flip the disc in the middle of the movie to continue the movie. Very similar to like on a VHS tape when you had a really long movie, they split it onto two tapes and at the very end you'd have to put in the second tape to finish watching the movie. Same principle. Um, however, laser disc players like the one I have, you don't have to actually get up and flip the disc, the machine will do it for you. But if a movie does come on multiple discs, which is what a lot of the like Criterion Collector's Editions movies did, then yeah, unless you had like a multi-disc player, which was really expensive, you'd have to get up after each disc, which is about an hour after every hour, and manually switch the discs, which could be a pain in the butt. Um, laser discs have been around for a long time. They've pretty much always, from my understanding at least, coexisted with VHS. And much like Betamax and later DVDs, the, the image quality on laser disc eventually was supposed to surpass VHS, from what I understand. The reason why you wouldn't really need a laser, laser disc player today is because most people, I would assume, own a flat screen HD TV. If you try to hook up an old piece of equi equipment like a VCR or a DVD player using the regular yellow, white, and red video cables to an HD TV, the picture looks really blurry and doesn't look very good because that technology was meant for an old uh, tube television, a CRT t television, which is over here. And laser discs, uh, they don't, ha they, they, you know, they're an older technology, so they didn't come with HDMI ports or that kind of thing. So they're not going to compete with DVDs or especially Blu-rays, especially when hooking them up to a regular TV. Um, even if you like look at both on a CRT television, DVDs have caught up quite a bit. Um, and they just don't compare to what I've seen on Laserdisc. I've only seen the one movie, Ghostbusters. But um, 
Now, what's funny was uh, Laserdisc actually continued on later than a lot of people uh, realized. For example, The Phantom Menace, which came out in 99, had a Laserdisc. I think The Matrix did too. I believe the last Laser Laserdisc movies were, came out in 2001. However, um, Pioneer, who made most of these Laserdisc players, they officially stopped making the last Laserdisc players in 2009. So the players themselves have, have been around for a while. Um, actually, I went onto Pioneer's website. Uh, I believe it was the Japanese website. You can still buy a new Laserdisc players. The, the last kind of... The last shipment of, la of Laserdisc players, actually, you could buy combo DVD Laserdisc players, um, but they range from $900 to $1,700 brand new, and for just a Laserdisc DVD player that probably doesn't even have an HDMI port, that's a lot of money to be dishing out on an old piece of equipment that's going to be connected to my 27-inch CRT television. Like I said, there, there were some disadvantages and advantages. Um, the, the picture quality was supposed to be superior, but like I said, the flipping of the discs, the size. Um, the other thing with laser discs is I never, I don't remember going into a store and being able to just buy a laser disc. If I, I tried to really think, maybe like Best Buy and maybe Circuit City back in the like real early 90s, maybe you could walk in and there might be a small laser disc section, but laser disc players were quite a bit more expensive than VHS players, and the movies were, my God, really expensive. So back in the day, VHS tapes were about 20. Laser discs started at $35 brand new, and that was for just the movie. If you got like a special collector's edition of the movie, you're talking about like a hundred bucks for one movie. From my understanding, the movie Lawrence of Arabia, which is well over three hours, took seven discs. Seven discs for one movie. Can you imagine flipping the disc seven different times or however many times to finish watching that movie? And it's a good movie, don't get me wrong, but I think I'd prefer the Blu-ray. Um, so there was the pricing issue. It was a very niche, niche, is that, is, is that the word? They were a very special collector's edition type of thing. They had a very small market. Like I said, they were more popular in Japan. Over here, people just wanted cheap entertainment. And VHS didn't look crappy back in the day. Today it does, of course, because, again, of, of the HDTVs and things like that. But back then, that was how we watched movies. So why I wanted to get a Laserdisc player, this is going to sound really funny, but my wife um, started picking me up a vinyl collection, records. I had a record player back in the day. I didn't actually grow up with records. I mean, they were there when I was a kid, but CDs back in the late 80s, when I was like five years old, coexisted with records, and more and more people were getting CDs because, you know, they were smaller. Um, there was a debate of whether or not the sound was better. A lot of people will swear that vinyl will always sound better than uh, CDs. Uh, this, I recently bought a record player, um, but it's got like these really crappy tinny speakers on it. So if I use that thing back there, it's a Crosley that I bought for like 70 bucks. You know, CDs to me sound better because I have more uh, recent Thing, you know, mediums that I can listen to CDs on with better speakers and things. Uh, but that's just my setup. Um, so she was at this place, um, Second and Charlie's, which is basically, think of it as a Barnes and Nobles that also sells a bunch of used stuff. Used, you know, video games. As early back as Super Nintendo games, they sell used CDs. They don't, as far as I know, specialize in selling laser discs because she bought me this. It's Ghostbusters. She thought it was just a vinyl, the soundtrack. But I looked at it and I pulled it out, and I'll show you what a laser disc looks like. This is a laser disc. It's about the size of a record. It's a little thicker, actually. If you took two records and put them on top of each other like a sandwich, that's the thickness of a typical laser disc. Looks like a big CD. What's kind of interesting about this is, from what I understand, only the audio on a laser disc is digital. The actual picture is analog, like a VHS tape. And I'll show you what a laser disc looks like in a minute. I'll pop this in and kind of show you what it looks like. I don't really know what that means in terms of picture quality. I mean, I know in digital, the picture is displayed in zeros and ones, but in terms of picture quality, when you look at this laser disc, it'll look very much like a VHS. It'll, it'll look more like a VHS picture than a DVD picture. So that might be what they mean. Um, but I, I also want to compare, just to show you this next to a record. Okay, um, just so I can compare, this is a VHS tape. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. That's a CD, or a, a DVD, sorry. 
much smaller and more compact than a VHS. Now that's a vinyl record because it's black and that's a laser disc. So in the same frame here, I've got a DVD, a record, and a laser disc, which is one reason why DVDs took off and laser discs kind of went south. So here's a record side by side. This is, I believe, the Rocky IV soundtrack. This is the Ghostbusters laser disc. Uh, you probably can't tell really in this video here. The laser disc is slightly bigger in diameter. Let's see if I can show you the, the width of these. Yeah, you really can't tell on camera. But the laser disc is, well, a little thicker. Like I said, if you took two records and stacked them on top of each other, that'd be the size of a laser disc. So yeah, that's another reason why laser discs probably didn't catch on. Now I'm going to show you kind of the features of a laser disc player. Um, it's from from what I can understand, just from the Ghostbusters laser disc, uh, a lot of the features kind of operate the same way as uh, the DVDs. Now the laser disc player that I have the buttons on the actual player. There's a lot of buttons on this thing. None of them really seem to work. I mean, the play button works and all that works fine. It plays a disc. Um, but I did order a remote off of eBay. A lot of these units actually don't come with remotes. You have to remember, I'm not buying this new. This is basically a piece of equipment that's been sitting in someone's garage for probably 15 years um, and just sat there collecting dust and they were like, well, time to get rid of it. Um, the price, I, with shipping and everything, I probably spent about 135 on the unit. Uh, the remote was like another 13. Um, I don't know if it's, I'm still waiting for that to come, but hopefully the buttons on there works so I can use like the fast forward and stuff. But let's just, I'll show you what the image quality looks like. Okay, this is my CRT TV. Um, I wanna say it's probably a 27 inch. I've had this TV for probably about 15 years or so. It still works. I use it to play all of my classic video games like my Super Nintendo, my N64, PlayStation, all that stuff. Um, I've got a switch box there. Um, that is my VCR. I've had this for probably longer than my TV. It used to belong to my dad's. Um, became mine when I moved out. Um, it still works. Although my, my son recently, my three-year-old son, stuffed Oreo cookies and chocolate bars in there. So I just got it back from repair. It still works fine. Um, this is my Laserdisc player. As you can see, the compartment there is pretty big. I haven't played an audio CD on it yet, but it should play audio C It's supposed to be able to play audio CDs and karaoke discs as well. Um, these are the chapter buttons. It's kind of interesting because D uh, laser discs don't have DVD menus, but they still have chapters. Um, I don't think the Ghostbusters laser disc has it, but a lot of the laser discs that you can buy on the very back of the packaging, they have the, the actual chapters with the numbers. And if you wanted to skip to, let's say, chapter 12, you could just push the chapter 12 button and it'll go there. Like I said, on here for some reason they don't work. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or... I mean, it is a very old unit. Um, but they also have... Let's see if I can see here. They have, you know, microphone inputs, um, echo, different effects you can have on it. That's mostly for, like, your karaoke type stuff. Um, I'm going to turn it on. It turns on just like regular laser disc player. I have it hooked up to S-Video right now, so you should get a slightly better signal. Right now there's no disc in there. Let me turn my light off here. But I'm going to, let's see. Sorry about the light. There's the tray. And you can see it's big enough to house, I would believe you'd put the CD in the middle there, but the laser disc goes on top. Uh, as I mentioned before, laser discs were typically two-sided. So side A, side B, this player, I've actually watched the whole movie. It'll actually uh, flip the disc for me. Um, we're going to put it on side one. It doesn't really matter. I believe you can put it on either side and start it on whatever you want because I will show you It's on there like that um, Right there disc side a disc side B So even though it's on disc side a or disc side one right now I can push the B button and it'll automatically play the second side of the disc So this is hilarious. I'm going to close this up and watch this intro here. This is funny So it's going to start playing um, much like a DVD player, it should start playing by itself. There we go. Look at that intro. That is a trippy 80s intro right there. Laser vision. And it's working. We are now watching Ghostbusters on Laserdisc. 
I don't have this hooked up to uh, a great sound system, but the sound sounds pretty good. Um, I, I'm sorry for the flickering there. It's just the way the camera records the TV. But as you can see, when it faded to black just now, there's all these artifacts in there. It looks very much like VHS. It's very kind of grainy. The other thing you'll notice is this is a full frame laser disc. Um, movies at the time, like VHS movies, uh, a lot of us, we watched full, full frame. I mean, we didn't even know what Letterbox was. So it was very awkward for me to watch this movie because I've seen the widescreen version on DVD so many times that it's very distracting um, why the, you know why full frame is distracting, and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm not going to show the whole movie here, but I'll show you something else. So about, about an hour into the movie, the movie stops to flip the disc, and I'll, I'll, I can't fast forward it right now, and I don't really want to sit here for two hours and show the whole thing, but I'm going to go to side B. So I push the side B button. And I think how it works is it's not actually physically flipping the disc. Um, there's a little laser inside that comes around and reads the opposite side of the disc. So here we go. This is funny. It starts with the same intro. So at first when I saw this, I thought it was starting the movie over again. But no, it says side two. Why doesn't it just start the movie up again? I don't know. This is where the second... So this is right after the scene where Louis Tully, Rick Moranis' character, gets possessed in front of the restaurant by uh, Gozer. Um, that was the end of side one, and it takes off right from there. If I were to watch the movie all the way through, um, it would basically stop for about 15 seconds, give me a blue screen while it flips the disc, and then it would start here. Not a big deal, but again, with DVDs, uh, that doesn't happen. Um, so the, there's, there's Ghostbusters on Laserdisc. Um, I actually recently bought the Star Wars Trilogy on Laserdisc. It's this massive box set. Um, it was relatively expensive or relatively not expensive, depending on how you look at it. Compared to, like, the Blu-ray package, which is, like, 99 bucks, I spent a little less just for the original trilogy. Apparently, it's brand new, never been opened. I kind of find that hard to believe, but that's what the seller listed it as, so we'll see. I'm praying to God. It's supposed to be, like, a nine-disc set. It's, like, two discs per movie. Um... It might come with some special features, so I don't know. I've never actually owned it. But interestingly enough, the first copy of Star Wars I ever owned on VHS, a friend of my dad's actually owned a Laserdisc player, and he owned the Star Wars trilogy on Laserdisc. So he transferred them over to VHS for me so I could have my own copy. Um, and it was kind of weird because growing up, I'd be in the middle of the movie, and then all of a sudden it'd go to a blank screen for like 15 seconds, and... Um, the guy who recorded them for me explained it to me, but I'd never actually seen a Laserdisc firsthand. So growing up watching Star Wars, I always remember, especially the original film, um, exactly when it would cut off. Um, and it was just so kind of funny. It wouldn't cut off in the middle of action. It would. They'd always try to find the best place to cut. You know, you didn't have a guy flying through a wall and then all of a sudden it would stop and go to the next scene. Um, but it was just kind of funny. And because it was on VHS, I wasn't getting the, you know, the picture quality that I would have gotten with the actual laser disc. Also, in 2006, when they uh, released Star Wars with the theatrical versions as uh, um, bonus features on the second disc, apparently those laser discs were the the masters that those originated from. So basically, when you're watching those, you're watching a laser disc transfer, which, from my understanding, isn't even a good transfer. I don't I don't know how laser disc exactly transfers to DVD or how that process. I mean, I know. You know, I've I've recorded footage before, um, but uh, I don't know why the transfer would be worse on DVD. I, I don't really know, but um, I have seen those DVDs. They don't look great, so I'm hoping the laser discs look a little better than that. Um, the reason why, I mean, I didn't hook this up directly and capture the footage. I just pointed the camera at the screen just to give you a quick glimpse. Um, when Amanda first saw this on Laserdisc, she was, like, taken aback. She was like, why does it look so fuzzy? It's supposed to be Laserdisc. And I said, well, maybe it's a... I was a little disappointed, too, because I was expecting something a little closer to DVD. Although, again, the picture quality is not digital. The picture itself is an analog signal. Um, it could be that the player is also old, and maybe the lens, you know, the, the laser itself is dirty. I don't know. I don't want to take it apart and clean it, because um, this isn't the second time... The first time I ordered a Laserdisc player... Um, it didn't actually work. I had to send it back. And what's funny is most of the Laserdisc players you find online are Pioneer. This one is a Panasonic. It's one of the few ones that are non-Pioneers, and this is the one that worked for me. Um, now, from my understanding, 
You could also buy um, laser discs. There are two different forms, basically. You could buy a movie in extended play, and that way they could fit more video on one side of a disc. Um, but you lessened the quality a little bit if you did that. Um, then there were like the uh, the better versions, which you could only fit half an hour on each side of the disc, so you'd have more interruptions during the movie, but um, you'd have better quality, which I think is how the Star Wars ones that I got are. Which means I'm gonna be it's gonna be flipping a total of four times during a two-hour movie. Um, so again. Kind of see why laser laser disc didn't really take off. The other th the other thing I wanted to talk about briefly is the full frame versus the widescreen. It's it's kind of pointless to talk about it now because with Blu-rays and digital and everything, most things are widescreen. People's TVs are widescreen, so no one really talks about pan and scan and widescreen. And actually, that laser disc version of Star Wars that I was talking about was widescreen. It was letterbox. That was the first time in the early 90s that I, in the early 90s that I'd ever heard the term letterbox. And back then, like everybody else, I was like, why is it like that? I'm missing like, half the picture is missing. It was like a rectangular picture with two black bars. On a CRT TV, it looks kind of weird. Um, and back when laser discs were coming out, you could kind of buy both, I guess, if you wanted to. Some movies were full frame and some were widescreen. It wasn't like as prevalent with, when DVDs first came out, you could kind of choose, do I want full screen or widescreen today? I think everything is widescreen because no one owns a CRT TV anymore. But I was watching Ghostbusters and it's real awkward because a lot of the times the, the in the frame, the movie was shot so wide that when there's like two people talking, it the movie tries to zoom in to both people at the same time and it's like it can't figure out where to focus on. So you'll hear like Peter Venkman talking and Sir Gurney Weaver will be talking, but it only you only get like half of their faces in the frame. It looks weird. And I remember having arguments about this like 10 years ago when it was still kind of an option and people had a hard, some people had a hard time understanding what I was talking about. But watching it today, like it's, it's night and day. Like I, I can't believe we actually settled for pan and scan back in the day. Cause for 20 years, we watched movies like that. You know, we didn't know that, oh, movies are different in the theaters than they are on the TV screen. But it's a huge difference. And thankfully, because of widescreen TVs and, you know, everything else, we don't have to deal with that anymore. The movie you get in the theater is pretty much the same thing, unless it was like shot in IMAX or something, as it is at home. So a little disappointing there, but I'm still really glad I got it. Um, this is just a little, you know, history lesson of laser discs and why I got a laser disc player. And I'm you, you can go on eBay and get like like 20 laser discs for like 50 bucks. I mean, they're a little more expensive than VHSs, but they're a collector's item in their own right. Like VHS tapes, you can go into a Salvation Army and like buy like a VHS tape for 50 cents, if not less. They're not really collector's items. They're more, they take up space. As do laser discs, but you're not gonna go into a Salvation Army or anything like that and necessarily find a laser disc movie. So they're even though they're still obsolete, they're kind of a rare specimen and they're kind of special in their kind of awkward way. So uh, this was just a little, you know, video that I wanted to put together to kind of show you guys what a laser disc was and you know, all the pitfalls and the trials, the tribulations and all that good stuff. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go watch some Ghostbusters.